The Secrets of Technology is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to The Secrets of Technology. Hi, I'm Dom Bettinelli, and you're listening to The Secrets of Technology, where we discuss the technology news that's important to you from a uniquely Catholic point of view. Joining me today on the panel are Thomas Sanherho. Hey, Thomas. Hi, Dom. And Joanne Mercier. Hi, Joanne. Hey, Dom. And Happy New Year to you both and to the audience. Right. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. We, uh, we Thank took a... goodness it's 2021. <laughs> yes, nothing yes. terrible could be happening this year. <laughs> We're not talking about any of that. We're only talking about good things today, mostly. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> um, I just, you know, we took a couple weeks off of, over the break. Nothing, nothing really big in technology news happens, although we have a few headlines that we'd like to cover. Uh, and we just to regroup and recuperate and re- recreate with our families and in- celebrate the holidays uh, as, you know, Christmas, New Year's, and uh, today uh, is the traditional date of Epiphany uh, at which we open gifts. Uh, in my family, we do a lot of uh, the, the, when Jesus got his gifts is when we get our gifts, is how we do it. Uh, and there was some tech in those in those gifts, and we'll be talking about that in a second. Uh, but I do want to plug something before we get here, which is a little anticipation. This is our 96th episode of Secrets of Tech. So we're coming up close to our 100th episode, and we're planning a great 100th episode coming up at the beginning of February. Uh, so, um, I don't know, stay subscribed. Of course you're going to stay subscribed. Why would you unsubscribe? <laughs> it's not, like, if you're going to unsubscribe, you're going to unsubscribe. But uh, just a, a little anticipation. We're planning some fun. Uh, we may actually have some audience participation. We'll, we'll, we next week we may actually have, ask you to uh, send something in, or and if you want to send in some of your feedback on how the show has helped you, what you think of the show, that sort of thing. We'd love to play some of your feedback uh, during our 100th episode. So we look forward to that. So uh, we'll have the addresses you can send all that stuff to you at the end of the show. So stick around for that. But as I was mentioning, we are going to talk about today uh, some of our favorite tech that we we got for Christmas this year. Some of the some of the tech that showed up in our stockings or under the tree, and uh, or and not necessarily the tech we got, but or the tech that our you know people in our family got. But some fun tech, cool things that we got uh, over the over the holiday. So, and uh, I'll let uh, Joanne. Why don't you start? What what is some cool tech that you uh, got for Christmas? I know you got something really cool. Yes, uh, my husband, who likes to gift me with tech because it's an easy get, <laughs> um, decided that he would grant my request of a Synology or a Synology, depending on how you want to pronounce it, DS220 plus NAS system. It's a net- network attached storage. Not that you can have too much storage in your life, but I was looking for a place to do two things to be able to back up and use it as a time machine because our old time machine is starting to slow down. And I wanted to use it as a Plex server, meaning I wanted to be able to put my media in it, you know, all of, my, all of our uh, DVDs and of movies and TV programs so that we were able to play it back on our Apple TVs because we're cord cutters. So we need something else <laughs> to, right. to, to, to hook on to. So I, I ended up with the, um, the two bay system because you can get them in like two, four, 12, you right. know, and the good thing about them, what I understand is that there, you can add to them. So if I do, if I want to have four bays, then I could probably either get another two or get a four and have six bays, but each one of them will store as much data i believe up to this one goes up to 32 terabyte per drive i you believe could, you could put 32 like terabyte drives in up to the i think it's like something like that so yeah if you get if you buy massive drives it will take mm-hmm. up to uh two 32 terabyte drives right. and the the way it comes standard is is that it's a raid so it it mirrors the data for reliability on both drives but you can also reformat it for uh, if, you, if you like to walk without a tightrope well, I'm not quite sure what I want to do yet <laughs> because the original intent was to put a backup in one and to put Plex in the other. But if I, you know, if I can mirror it fine, 
Uh, but if I run out of room, now I'm going to have to get bigger desks. And my husband's going to be like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he knows technology, but he doesn't quite understand the techiness of and the geekiness of, ooh, more space, more <laughs> places to put things in. Um, so I just started playing with it. Dom was, before we started today, Dom was giving me a few pointers. Um and I'm right now I'm pretty excited about it. But yeah, it's one of those things where if you play with it too long, you tend to get like mush head and your brain goes to <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a go place cross-eyed. where you, yep, <laughs> you get cross eyed. I just get mush. I, I call it mush brain. It's like, OK, I got to walk away from this and then I'll come back. But I think especially as a cord cutter and wanting to watch the pennies on how much I spend on all these other services that are now starting to, you know, blow up Peacock and Friendly and all of that. I, I, I think we came to a decision where we have a, an, an array of DVDs that we like to watch, yet we don't watch them unless they show up on one of these services. So it's like, well, why don't we just put our own service together? And that way, when we want it, we can go find it. So my husband can watch the American president 17 million times as much as he wants. (laughs) When things are getting icky. Yeah, Yeah. it is. So and I'd had Plex before. I think Plex is a wonderful server. When they used to do the cloud service, I had Plex. And it's pretty straightforward. You put it in there. Now, I guess it does quite a bunch of new things. Um, live tv and i'm not sure i'm looking for that but i'm just looking for a place where it's easy to find the selection you want click on it and you play it so and and this will give my handbrake software something to do now <laughs> right as i do some there reformatting do some work with it <laughs> you, you mentioned like you know uh, get more and more storage i'm like i feel like saying hi i'm dumb and i have a storage problem like because <laughs> <laughs> I, if I see a hard drive, I want it. You know, oh, hard drives are on sale. Like, what do you need another hard drive for? I need to put in some stuff on it. I mean, what? Like, of course, I I need I need breathing room. I'm like Chris Jeff, you know. Uh, so yeah, I, I remember the days when a 800k floppy disk, and you had to uh, what what the, what precious things am I going to delete in order to make room on that floppy mm-hmm. disk? So yeah, yeah, it's I've, it's like my my dad who lived through the, in the depression, you know, or my my uncles. My dad was young, but my uncles who lived through the depression and won't throw away t- uh, aluminum foil. But you know, it was right. like, oh yeah, yes. we might need that so uh yes uh, storage is awesome synologies are great i've been using them for years i'm on my third synology uh I've, i only have two of them now one for work and one personal uh and the the third one i sold uh, a few months ago and uh yeah they are fantastic and uh like every everything and i i use the heck out of it myself synology is a great a product because it's powerful it's super powerful almost too powerful at times like there's so many options and things you can flip and levers and all the all the software you can install software on it it's like an operating system it's like a computer mm. it's a linux computer mm. essentially and you can install software on it like plex but they they have a great visual interface that you access through the browser that makes yes. it so so much easier I really like that. Although it was telling me at one point to download the software to the to the Mac and I couldn't do it because dun 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 I updated to Big Sur over oh. vacation. Oh. And they're not quite Big Sur compatible yet? Not yet. No. Oh. I'm glad so, I didn't upgrade yet. <laughs> no, well, and that, I, I got the stink eye from my husband who said, you like to upgrade to everything. And, <laughs> uh, but I was like, but I need to when I can. So I was finished with work and I said, okay, I have two weeks. I, I read everything I could and I said, okay, I'm going to go to Big Sur. And I like the interface on Big Sur and I like some of the things that it's doing now. It, it, it streamlines my, my workflow a little bit better. But... There are still some things that aren't compatible yet, and the software is one of them for Synology. So I go through the web browser, and that works. So it's nice to have the, you know, either or. Yeah, uh, that may hold me back from upgrading. I was going to upgrade to Big Sur myself uh, around this time, but now I may hold back a little longer. Um, my big concern is the is my production software, the recording stuff and the editing stuff. Uh, and that's all in place apparently now, uh, but... We'll see. <laughs> I, Check, I, I, read, yeah. go to Synology and read because they they said something about I. Somebody said that they upgraded to Big Sur and then knocked something out okay. of their Synology. So check first. I will. I will. Uh, Thomas, what did you get for Christmas? 
Well, we are on a little bit of a tight budget around here, so we didn't end up getting much uh, tech that's new and shiny. But my kids did end up getting some laptops uh, that were that are you know the school was getting rid of them, and um, my uh, tech director was like, "I have to pay somebody to come pick these up. Would you just take them home for me?" <laughs> <laughs> nice. So nice. I said, "Sure," um, and we brought them home, and they were all old Windows machines uh, that were used at the school, so they're not great. But uh, in effort to really have my kids have a good experience with it, I tried out a couple of different uh, Linux uh, distros on them. And I really have settled. I, I think Linux Mint, uh, for the experience that it is, it is the best Linux distro that you can get. It's uh, called Linux Mint. They're on update Ulyana. Uh, I recommend just going with the Cinnamon desktop version. Uh, I know that sounds like a lot of information, but trust me, it's it's really not just follow that procedure and you'll get there and it feels just like windows uh it really is uh just a great uh service that uh anybody who's wanting to try out linux and who's like well what is linux all about give it a shot uh it's an open source desktop uh open source operating system uh with a really clean desktop that works for anybody who's used to the windows environment and so my kids have been loving that they've been uh playing around on it really well I've been getting into some of the security side of things and uh, downloaded an OS called Parrot OS, which is a security um, operating system, uh, also Linux, uh, but it has a lot of the um, the hacker tools in it. Uh, so it's really geared toward people who are interested in uh, being able to use their computer on a network in a more Red Hat kind of way where you're going into a, an environment and trying to, uh, you know, see how it works and uh, test out the, the systems and maybe even hack into things uh, if that's what you're into. But that's what this one's used for. And I have been on a three or four month quest to try and find a way to record this podcast and all the podcasts that I'm doing on my Linux machine. And I finally have it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I decided I decided to ditch Arch, <laughs> which was like uh, you have to build everything yourself. And I found um, this is, is not actually a distro. It's um a personalization of a distro. It's called AV Linux. And um, what it is, is it's a guy who's been doing AV stuff on Linux for years. And he took a distro that he likes and has just adapted it to be the perfect AV distro. So it's got all of the recording software in it that you would want, all of the graphics editing software in it that you would want. And he's put it together so that everything is seamless. So you don't have to worry about trying to connect all of the different buttons for Jack and all the D bus and the pulse audio. And it, 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 he's got it all set up and it works wonderfully. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> if you're hearing this podcast, it worked out great. <laughs> it worked out great, right? Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah. And so then the, the last thing we got is we got a server out of that whole deal. We got a, a it, it's really just a computer, but I'm using it as a server. And um, we have a local instance of Minecraft running for my kids so they can, log into their own Minecraft world locally on the network and play uh, no problems there. And I am currently also setting up a media server on that uh, on that server myself. So I'm going to be using the, the Kodi uh, home media server system, which is an open source. Uh, I think it's similar to Plex, but it's like an open source version of that same kind of thing. I, I got it because it works with our Roku and we're going to just start doing the same thing where we're just going to dump all of our DVD files onto this uh, server that I have back here and then be able to stream them from the living room. If you have DVDs and you've, you've ripped them or if you plan on ripping them, you got to get Plex or, or Cody or something like that. It just makes watching stuff it, like so. A, you don't have to watch it on your laptop. You know, you can watch it on the big TV you have in the living room, but also it just makes it easier to access all of that. So, yeah, totally. It was some home media server is uh, uh, is a is must have. I have a question, Thomas. Mm -hmm. In Linux, uh, if you want, if somebody like me wanted to learn Linux, would it be good to put it on a virtual machine first to see what it looks like? You absolutely can. Um I wouldn't recommend AV Linux because there's a specific problem with it. But okay. um, Linux Mint on a virtual machine is a really great way to go. Okay. Uh, and they, they actually assume a lot of times when you're installing it, they assume that you want to install it either in a virtual environment or beside an already existing operating system. So okay. you can just um, you download the files. You can uh, there's a few USB disk make uh, USB uh, drive makers that you can get for Windows, mm -hmm. and you can just uh, 
place that in and it'll install, uh, you get to test it out from the USB and then it'll install right to the system from there. Hmm. Yeah, because that's how I, I have a couple of virtual machines. One is Windows and the other one is um, the, um, the old Mac, Mojave just in case because of those 32 bit programs that I don't want to lose but I've been I've been playing with wanting to look at Linux so thank you for that because it seems it seems interesting everybody's talking about Linux machines so I'd like to see what they're all about why don't I talk about what my Christmas was like this year I got a few things and uh, then the the the, uh, the family got something but uh, I uh I, I, of no secret I've been using smart home uh, stuff for ages. Uh, I love my home kit and things that work with Echo and that sort of stuff. And uh, I've got a lot of Philips Hue bulbs all over the house and uh, they've been pretty good. But the, the the downside is they're expensive. Just even the, the, the plain white bulbs, which is most of the ones I get, are uh, 15 or more dollars. Whereas the uh, the let me see here, the uh, colored ones are like 50 bucks they they're they i think they've come down since then but they uh they tend to they've tended to be expensive <clears throat> but there's a new brand of uh light bulb out there called from miros and they've got a few different home kit uh items uh you know smart home items out there but uh, i got some smart light bulbs so a two pack of smart light bulbs that are color uh, is sixteen dollars for two of them? Nice, right now they and they don't require a hub. Philips Hue requires a hub, and there's an upside and a downside to that. The upside of requiring a hub is is that they don't each one doesn't require an individual IP address, and there there could be limits to how many IP addresses your server, your I'm sorry, your router could handle. You know, so that that could that could be an issue, but not for not for me for a while. I don't have that big of a house and that many smart home devices, but it, for some people that might be, but in general, it's just each bulb is individual in the, in the uh, network and you set it up in ho in the home app or um, via echo or, or whatever. And so, um, so that was one, one thing. And so that's great. And I, I love the idea of the inexpensive uh, smart home lights. I'm still trying to figure out exactly where I want to have colored lights and probably in the room where I watch TV and have that like sort of uh, ad that adaptive light experience where uh, what you're watching a, a movie and it changes color. I'm trying to figure out how how exactly to do that, but the, I think I think I've found some software that, that that can do that. But if not, I've got other other ideas. Another thing I got is something called the Electjet MagSafe USB C adapter, and what it is, it's a little dongle that's USB C at one end and it plugs into any of the newer macbooks for instance uh and this is especially for for mac users it plugs into any of the newer macbooks that have uh that charge via usb c instead of via the old magsafe and one of the knocks against usb c uh charging is if someone comes along and kicks the cable it drags the laptop off the desk uh instead of disconnecting like magsafe did which was what we loved in fact this this exact thing happened to me uh two nights ago my son went running out of my office and caught the cable and sent my macbook pro flying and banging Ooh. i was i like i don't even want to like at first i didn't even want to open it i'm like uh and it was fine <laughs> but uh so what this is is so it's USB C on one end and on the other end is a magsafe input so i can use and so i've got when we i upgraded i had all these extra magsafe uh uh, laptops all over the place that I, that, yeah, I'm not sorry. We, we upgraded from MagSafe laptops. So I've got these MagSafe power adapters all over the place that I acquired over the years. And those uh, power adapters are not cheap. And I'm like, oh, what am I going to do with these now? Well, now I can use them with this adapter. Uh, so, and, and if someone kicks it, 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 it'll just detach from it. So that's really great. And they have a couple other kinds that are smaller that are, that are just like MagSafe and adapt U, the USB-C power adapter. Uh, you can look that up on, on online. You just uh, look for ElectJet. I'll put a link to the, uh, the one that I got here uh, in the show notes. So this is that. So that's a little cool, a cool little um, thing I got. And then my sister got the family a, an, uh, a telescope. A, it's not the same one that Jack was talking about a few weeks ago, or uh, last month when he was talking about telescopes, but it's um, National Geographic 
114 millimeter reflector telescope. And uh, so a reflector telescope is the kind where it's got the uh, the eyepiece on the side and it reflects to the back and then out the front, you know, the, so the light comes in from the front, reflects the back and, you know, so it makes it a longer telescope without being a bigger, that sort of thing. Anyway, um, it's it's got several different uh, eyepieces, so you can get higher and higher magnification and it's got an ad- it's got an adapter. Let me just, uh, I'm, I'm a little dubious about this one. It's got a little adapter. It's like a suction cup adapter that you, for your a smartphone mount. So you can mount your phone with the camera lens over the eyepiece. So you could take pictures through it. It wasn't really working great for me when I tried it, but I think it might be because my phone was in a case. And so it was making it distant from the eyepiece. So if maybe if I took the phone out of the case and put it right up against it, it might work better. But um yeah. Did did you get a chance to use it to see the planetary? No, no. Funny story about that. It, my sister gave us the telescope before she she come by and dropped it off, and we're like, so you know, on the the eighteenth or something like that. And she's like, so you guys are gonna open? It? I'm like, no, no. We'll wait for Christmas morning. She's like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, let me know when you do. And uh, and and when we opened it, Christmas morning, like, oh, uh, well. It was cloudy here on the 21st anyway, so we it missed was. we missed the we would have missed the conjunction anyway, so we wouldn't have been able to see it. Uh, so, but I really I really would have been kicking myself if I if I uh, you know not opened the new telescope and missed the conjunction uh, because we insisted open on Christmas morning. Actually, I would I would have been mad at Melanie. I like to open presents as soon as they show up at the door, no matter when it is. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. She's she's a delayed gratification person uh, in the in the relationship. So. Uh, but you know it, it didn't hurt us in the end so that was that was fine but uh, so those are the three things so yeah a little bit of a uh, you know not not grand tech you know we didn't do big things uh but uh a lot of fun uh, well, there's one more thing that's coming that's more for i bought it but it, and it's sort of for me but it's for the family i bought another home pod mini uh oh. I, I had one uh that i got when they first came out and it's so good i decided to get a second one for the kitchen uh, because it the the connecting to it from an iPhone is so much better, so much like it is, it is a, a flawlessly better than connecting via Bluetooth. Anything, it is so awesome. You just like you literally you start playing a sound file and you tap the top of the mini with your phone and it transfers perfectly. Nice. It, it even backs up a little bit to so you're not you haven't missed anything. You know just. Uh, one of the last, one of the problems with the Echo is when you connect via Bluetooth and you go in and out of range. Say, the Echo's in the kitchen and the bedroom is the far side of the house. It's just far enough where it's constantly connecting to Dominic's iPhone, disconnecting oh, no. from Dominic's <laughs> iPhone. And like at ten o'clock at night, it's connecting to Dominic's iPhone, yelling across right. the house, "Shut up!" <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it just, it just wants you to know it's there, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I hey, feel your pain. Yeah. Hey, good night. Hey, good night, everybody. It's like the, good night, like, John Boy. <laughs> it's like your drunken frat uh, roommate, you know. Dude, uh, quiet. Everyone's sleeping. So this this just disconnects quietly, and and it doesn't stay connected. If you, once you've dis, you know turned off the sound, you know turned off whatever you're playing, it quietly disconnects after a few minutes, and then you just it's easy enough to reconnect it. So. Uh, I I much prefer that. So uh, that's 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 on its way because they were sold out. So um, we sh- I should have it in a few weeks. But yeah, so that was on my list. Yeah, that was definitely on my list. It, it's it's a nice little device and it works. Uh, in fact, Siri, don't don't respond. Uh, works really. <laughs> I was waiting for it to be able to respond to me. Uh, it works better on it than I think on the phone or the iPad. So uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know why that is, but it seems to work respond better. I had basically given up on the S lady a while ago, but now it mm-hmm. actually seems to work pretty good. So, um, knock on wood. <laughs> so that's uh, so that was our Christmases. Uh, so uh, well, I'd lo- we'd love to hear what you got for Christmas. You know, if you got something cool or interesting, exciting from a technology standpoint, uh, you can let us know. Uh, send us an email at technology at sqpn dot com, and we'd love to hear what you got for Christmas. So before we move on to our next segment, uh, I do want to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create Secrets of Technology, including Thomas G., James S., Jorge C., John K., and James C. 
Their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of technology and all the shows at StarQuest. And now is a great time to become a StarQuest patron. Thanks to a generous gift from a StarQuest supporter, when you start a new Patreon monthly pledge at sqpn.com slash give, the first three months will be matched by an equal amount from our donor. So if, for example, you give, uh, if you become a new patron at $10 a month, after three months, our donor will give $30 to StarQuest to support all our shows, including this one. And that makes your gift go even further. So if you've been thinking of becoming a StarQuest patron, now is the time. Visit sqpn.com slash give today. So let's talk about some of our headlines that have uh, cropped up over the uh, last month or so. Uh, and this one this one goes back to mid-December, but this is so good I could not like I could not <laughs> let it go. Uh, I'm glad you picked it up, though. Yes. Yeah. I mean, how could oh, I not? Man. All right, here's the headline. <laughs> This six-year-old racked up $16,000 on mom's credit card playing video games. So you may have heard about this. This kid did sixteen grand in uh, on his mom's iPad in premium additions to a video game he's playing called Sonic Forces. You know those video games where it's free to play, quote-unquote, I'm doing air quotes, uh, and then... You know, in the game, in order to progress, you have to buy stuff at two and five or ten dollar increments all the way up to I think there's like a there's a I think she said there was like a one package which you get up to a hundred dollars, spend a hundred bucks worth on these things. And so this woman's six year old son, well, she's working in the other room, you know, locked down, working from home. She's working in her office. The kids in the other room got him on the iPad and he ended up uh racking up $16,000 in add-ons to his game. And so she's suing Apple. Like, how dare you allow my son? <laughs> how, how dare you allow anyone? Yeah. I, like, like right. it's your really? responsibility when you have this type of, of machine or computer that you know how it works and you teach your child how it works. Oh my so she had to have taught him something. There's a couple to- of, yeah, the, there's a little bit bad on Apple and there's a little bit bad. Yeah. There's a lot bad on her. So right. The, the little bit bad on Apple, Thomas, I think is what you were going to say, right? Right. Yeah. I was, it's it's sixteen thousand dollars in a single app is just ridiculous. There's no reason that there anybody be would flag. be doing that. That should there should yeah. be a flag. Some, no, I, something I should come up somewhere. <laughs> yeah. That that's like I I want to know how often someone spends thousands of dollars. Like I know that there are people, adults, who spend a hundred dollars, a couple hundred dollars on some of these games. To, to I've seen them in the game. Like there's no mm-hmm. way you have that unless you've spent a lot of money to right. get where you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, but how many how many times have people spent thousands like more than ten thousand dollars in a, in a game or in a short period of time. That's that should be a red flag of something is wrong, and so Apple right. should see that and say something. On the other hand, Joanne, I think you also make a good point. <laughs> mm, yes, because I think at some point she has shown this child how yes. to do this because you have to be. I mean, if you're going to make a purchase on an iPad, you have to double click something. You have to enter okay? a password. Yeah, that too. And even, but even if you have, even if you have face recognition, which the kid probably has in order to play with it, then you still have to double click something when you buy something or use, you know, or or your phone. And if, uh, I mean, your watch, for example, if she has a watch, she could have known what was going on because her watch would have been going off. Or her phone should, like if, so my kids, I have iPads that my kids use. And I have it set so that they, A, they cannot buy things on their own. They're, they're, the, the parental control features are clear and fairly mm-hmm. easy to use. And then when they do stuff on it that I do allow, or if I do a purchase on it, I get a notification on my phone and on my watch and in my email that a purchase has been made. Like, uh, I'm sorry, you, there is you can't blame apple for your lack of i'm sorry lack of parenting Amen. you you got to pay attention to this you can't just hand this this doorway to the world which is essentially what it is uh, because you know there's the entire world is on the other side of that screen uh, potentially to a 6 year old and expect him to to you know everything to be okay so right, right. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah that's... I don't know if if they she she was going after Apple and, and there was a little bit of a wrinkle in it, which is that when she went to Chase her her credit card bank, they said to wait. Uh, um, 
It wasn't until October she was told by Chase that the charges were hers and she did need to contact Apple. She didn't even know that the, that it was her son making the charges. So she, when she saw her bill, she said, oh, my gosh, someone got my credit card and they rang up all this, the things. And then Chase said, OK, we'll look into it. And then they came back months later from July to October and said, oh, no, these were valid charges. These are this is not fraud. And then you should need to you should contact Apple. And then she contacted Apple and Apple said, oh, you waited too long which is kind of dumb. Now, and the, and the same thing with Chase, we have, because we have a Chase card, we have a, a limit that if we hit that limit, Chase will send you an email saying, guess what? You hit that limit. It, uh, it, are you using this card? Is there something going on? Well, I would think some people would have that on their cards. I think that actually doesn't apply to the to this kind of purchase. Really? Yeah, um, yeah I, I think that doesn't apply to this kind of purchase just because it's it's a vendor that you have an established relationship with. And so it's not like it's a, it won't necessarily throw flags because it's not a new habit for you. It's something that you've done before you've been able to do before by buying something on Apple. And so they just assume that you're buying things on Apple and, and it kind of gets slid into that. Okay. This is common practice. And if the kid was doing it, like, you know, maybe he started out buying a couple of little ones and then he started buying more and more and more. It, it, learns that behavior and says, okay, this is normal behavior. They're just addicted to this thing now. And that's, that's okay. <laughs> that's, that's the way it is. So yeah, I think, I think a lot of uh, across the board, there are some flags that should be thrown that didn't. Um, and, and this is, it's not like this is a one-off. It's not like this is the only time we've heard of kids doing yes. this. Apple so Apple needs to fix this. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and they've done a lot to be fair. Yes. They have done a lot because like you're saying the the parental controls are very visible and it's not hard to use them. So yes, a lot of this is on the mom, but 16,000 in a couple of months, it, yeah. that sh everybody should be aware of that. And it, it does take a village in this case to raise a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I like this quote she has. And, and one part I agree and the other part I'm like, no. Uh, the one part is these games are designed to be completely predatory. I agree. These mm -hmm. freemium to play, free to play, pay later games are predatory. Fortnite makes a billion dollars a year off of their in-game purchasing. This is a huge business. Uh, they would not make that if they just charged fifty dollars up front for the game. Uh, on the other hand, she says, "What grown up would spend a hundred dollars on a chest of virtual gold coins?" <laughs> a lot of them. See the aforementioned uh, yeah. billion dollars. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> there are plenty of them. There, and they spend more than that even. So well, and that's and that's with with Fortnite. Fortnite's a great example of how I, I really like Fortnite because of what they're doing. I, I think that um, to, to to be fair to these, you know, uh, free to play. Uh, pay for premium content uh, uh companies uh fortnite's great because it does not affect the game you can sit and play the game for free and never spend a dime and you can have fun playing it you can talk to your friends about it when you get into it you will start to want to do that next step of you know buying the, the premium passes for the seasons uh buying the skins for your character that you like getting the the special and none of it's game affecting it's not like you get better stats you just it's it's visual or it's participating in a crowd uh event that you know people kind of want to do out of all the models it could be it's best <laughs> right no, no, no and that's that's yeah that's true the non-competitive upgrades are are the thing i uh, the thing that drives me crazy and that that some game companies like big ones like ea have gotten in trouble with is the loot crates that they sell that the only way to really advance in the game is to is to buy your way to the higher levels and i think that's 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 a terrible model and no one should and, and encourage that with the loot crates it's a gambling model too where it's you have right. to buy loot crates and you just get lucky what you, what you get it's not necessarily that you're buying a particular thing but that you're buying a box that you're not sure what's in the box until yes. you open it and it's like oh that's not the thing i needed so now i gotta go buy another box Right. And that's actually been outlawed in some places, that, that right. model. Yeah. Joanne? But I, I want to bring up another point. It's it's going back to the parenting thing. This is a woman who handed her child a computer to keep him quiet while she worked. Okay. And that's like giving him, you know, in, in my day, a box of matches. Okay. So you've got to figure out unless you've showed that child and gotten it to be responsible to use said product, then anything's going to happen because kids are kids and they're just going to go through everything. Bingo. It, you know, 
and that gives st- um, screen fatigue to kids. Kids are in front of screens so much now that I can see it in them when we have when we have faith formation classes. They have, they've got screen fatigue, and they're like this, and it's it's their eyes are bugging out. It, this is too much for kids. So of course, he keeps playing the thing, and he's going to rack it up because he wants more and more. It's a fix. It's it's the rat in the you know with the the, the lever getting the hit you know every mm-hmm. time it presses it. Uh, our kids we have we have like I mentioned before we have iPads and our kids can earn iPad time by doing chores and that sort of thing. But we have I have timers. I set up an elaborate um, uh, shortcut on them that sets a time whenever they launch a game the timer starts uh, for their turn and so you know, even if they flip games the timer is is the timer Ooh. and then when the timer's up they're done and you know they get. 20 minutes, half an hour, sometimes when they're, I'm in the middle of a game. Okay, you get a couple more minutes, uh, but then you're done. And even then, it's, some of the kids that they're, they, they can give, they can put it down easy. And some of the other ones, some of my other kids are, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a battle sometimes to get them to, to walk away from it. And you can see how dangerous it is for oh, yeah. kids and adults. I mean, how hard is it sometimes for the, we talked about this in Social Dilemma, how hard is it, do they, do they make it to put down your phone and and walk away from it. So mm. yeah, that this is this is part of that model of technology that is that is not good and human. It's not human humane. It does not feed us in good spiritual ways. So uh something to, to keep there. That's the serious aspect of the story is we've got to be careful that these technologies are not they're they're tools, but they can be used for good or for ill. And that's that's an, the the lesson I take from it. Speaking of for good or for ill uh, let's move on. It's the end of an era. Let's let's put it, let's let's say it that way. Oh, uh, Flash, uh, December thirty yes, first. Mark you well. <laughs> mark the end of Flash. Adobe Flash. If you've been on the internet for any more than uh, say about ten years or so, uh, you you've seen Adobe Flash animations and various other aspects somewhere especially if you've been on a restaurant website uh, more than 10 years ago <laughs> it seems mm. to all have flash animations uh and uh but now it's done in fact they they end of life did a while ago uh where it was they weren't you know going to be updating it but as of december 31st now it's no browser will run it and adobe says you know run the uninstaller cuz it's now a, it, we're not going to up do any security updates so any new security holes are your responsibility. So uh, if you have Flash installed on your computer, you should uninstall it. If you have a, a browser, you should update it. Um, but uh, the uh, Flash, and, and and as a consequence of that, uh, if you have an old Farmville farm or Cityville or what were some of the other ones that were like that from Z- some of those Zynga games, all those have shut down as well, uh, if anybody was still playing those. Um, I think I had a farm somewhere. I had a Frontierville village or something <laughs> somewhere that was still overgrown. I, I I didn't even know Farmville was still around. I thought it was gone. <laughs> Apparently, uh, it was somewhere on Facebook. It's hidden. Uh, but uh, I I did get so I actually got bit by this a little bit because my son has a math program mm. that that we subscribe oh. to called STM Math. Uh, and it's a visual math where he's not a he uh, he has reading trouble he has a learning disability uh, uh, d- dyslexia so he reading is hard for him so he does his math and it's a visual program so we were told that this was a great program for kids that are more visual than than reading and the problem was is it it was built in Flash and mm-hmm. a, 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 uh, last spring I was writing to them going okay Flash is going away. Are what you are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've got new stuff coming. We got new stuff. We'll let you know. We'll let you know. And the problem is that they are aimed at a at school systems and not homeschoolers. Although right. they try to accommodate homeschoolers, but um, in this case, they they're like, oh well, you know. And finally, I I was up against the wall. I upgraded his his computer, and it said, uh, um, we can't run this anymore in Safari. Or it, so you gotta, you know, you 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 not you gotta do something else. And so they finally upgraded the uh, app, like at the in November or something like that. So, um, yeah. But uh, we we I got the notice to delete in the end of December. Well, and and this is actually a really big deal. I um I was I was bemoaning it lightly because um I used to watch this uh this Flash content creator that made uh Homestar Runner. Homestar know, Runner. If you guys yeah. know it, yeah. Um, and, and he had a a lot of great stuff, and um he had a lot of just great like little short videos. They were quippy, they were silly, and um uh, they were fantastic fun. But here's the deal: Th- that's 
it's not watchable anymore. And and that's kind of a it's a sad kind of thing <laughs> where uh this this being removed it it takes a lot of that content. Uh, if you if anyone was a Newgrounds user, uh almost everything on Newgrounds was done in Flash. And it it's a, a lot of content that was low barrier to entry for the artist that's going to be lost now. Well, not maybe not. The Internet Archive says it's found a way to preserve Flash content for uh-huh. posterity using hmm. something called Ruffle Emulator. Uh, oh, so, cool. Uh, there, so it, I, I'm not exactly sure how this is all. It's, it's a Flash emulator. So I'm not sure how well it works or what's going to be there. But, yeah, this is actually an, an interesting problem in general for archivists and historians, which is, is content, including you know software, that is dependent on particular operating systems, particular hardware. When that goes away, the content can go away. We have to fig- we have to find right. out ways to preserve this stuff for poster. I mean, Homestar Runner is not Shakespeare, but it's <laughs> it's it's part of our culture. It's content. It it affected you know. So uh, yeah, I mean, it it's and it should be preserved. And uh, the, the and some of these people who created some of this stuff have found ways themselves to pres- to change it format to a to a new format or whatever but even that just it's it's still a problem that we need to deal with so um i would check with the internet archive and see if if i don't know if it's there or not but I, uh, hopefully it is someone someone's going to preserve homestar runner i'm sure <laughs> they better <laughs> <laughs> need strong oh. bad emails man <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well i mean it's just become for a certain generation of of techies it's become part of the lexicon uh, right. the, the homestar um all right so and then our our next headline uh, uh companies behaving badly <laughs> i love this one cuz this is so godaddy so godaddy uh a lot of the companies like they 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 they're vulnerable to phishing attacks on their employees right that that's that this is one of the ways that people break into companies networks is uh social engineering they send an email to an employee the employee opens the email and and inadvertently launches some malware that allows or you know a trojan that allows a bad guy to pack into the system or steal data and so one of the ways these companies they they train their employees supposedly and then they test the employees they send them fake phishing attempts so 500 GoDaddy employees received an email 2020 has been a record year for GoDaddy thanks to you we're giving you a bonus just click here to get yours you know select click here select your location and fill in the details by Friday December 18th and then 2 days later the, all the people who did that got an email. You're getting this email because you failed our recent phishing test. You will re- re- need to retake the security awareness social engineering training. And like these people thought they were getting a $650 Christmas bonus, but they got nothing. Uh, so <laughs> that, then when they these employees sent out, you know, they on, posted on social media and told their friends about it, it got out and became a real big uh, story on the internet about this awful, awful employer story. Uh, so, <laughs> what do you think, Joanne? Well, this was the Grinch that went fishing, <laughs> and yes. you know, I, I just, in a way, I understand it because we all get these things, and nobody wants to click on anything. Okay, but to set it up that way in a pandemic year when people are, you know, looking for any kind of bright happiness in their lives to be told that, you know, I just find, I find it extremely cruel. Now they did, they did flunk, but I find it cruel. I wonder where, like, where the, did it come from an actual GoDaddy campaign? Like where are the clues built into it to allow someone to say, this is phishing. So a couple of the ways you tell if something is an authentic message versus an inauthentic message is right. you don't look at like the return address. It said this one said happy holiday at godaddy.com. You look at the headers and you look at the header and it's and if you you dig down and is the actual source godaddy.com. Uh if if it is, that meant it came yeah. from GoDaddy servers. So then you trust it. And then the link, again, was it an internal link to their you know, or was it an obvious or, or even not so obvious, but but not a 
internal or valid link that that you would normally get like how how hard was it to figure out this was a bad link or was this a completely disguised email that could have been completely legitimate but they just said it wasn't that's that's something i haven't seen yet yeah and see i'd be looking i would i would have done that i would have looked to see what the address was i would have looked to see you know right it, but it's my, it, it'd be like my parish, my parish is sending me an email saying the same thing, you know, so click here and, and just let us know it's okay. But I still think I would have picked up the phone and, and called in and said, did you mean to send it as an email or you should have sent it through Slack? You right. know, like, it, right. It, Internal you know, messaging. It's, yeah. But we're small considering that GoDaddy is a much larger enterprise. Um, but I just think it was cruel. They could have used something else. I, I just think the, the premise was, eh, I don't like the premise. I don't like GoDaddy to begin with. So, right. So that, yeah, that's the two levels of this story. The first level is the, just, you know, doing this phishing attack on your employees and wasn't even a valid attack. But the other one was just like, it's a bonus, but you're not really getting it. Like they should have given them a bonus anyway, you know, but no, it's a bonus. No, we're not really giving bonuses this year. It's just a, a trick. I mean, just it's a cruel bait and switch. Mm -hmm. It was Grinchy, extremely yes. Grinchy, very Grinchy. Um, and they, they're even laying people off in 2020. So it's like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. GoDaddy. I well, I used to I used to have GoDaddy as a as a uh, a domain name uh, mm -hmm. company, and I've I've switched to Hover. That's that's my same preferred. here. Um, but uh, Thomas, what do you think of the 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 uh, the GoDaddy Grinch? I, uh, that's, it's an interesting way to test your employees, right? <laughs> like yeah, just, right, right. Just, just in general, but specifically with the bonus thing, that's just, uh, yeah, that's, wow. that's low. <laughs> that is low. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, those are our headlines this week. And, uh, so let's move on to our picks of the week. Thomas, why don't we uh, start with you? What's your pick this week? I think, uh, it's maybe familiar. All righty. Yeah. Uh, so back to the Linux uh, thing. Uh, Linux Mint is my pick for this week. I, I definitely recommend trying it out. So uh, we were talking earlier about the Mac OS. The latest update was Big Sur. Uh, in Linux, they title them uh, women's names. So in this in this particular in Linux Mint. So this one is Uliana. Um, and so that's that's their name for this particular OS uh, update. So similar to Big Sur, that's what we're talking about here. And um, they run a, you can pick the type of desktop that you want. I recommend Cinnamon for anybody that's coming from a Windows environment, but you can do XFCE or KDE. Um, and they have a few different distributions that have different desktop environments. And all that means is that's the way that the windows display on your screen as you're as you're working through things. Um, there's also one, uh, there's also a, a desktop called Budgie. That's for people who are coming from Macs. And so if you if you can find a, a distro that's using Linux Mint with Budgie as your uh, desktop support, that's a great way to go as well, because uh, it has that same kind of feel where everything's backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so so if you're used Ooh. to that, you know, the scroll yeah. is backwards, the Shots axis fired. are backwards, <laughs> <laughs> everything's backwards. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but so if if you are wanting to try out Linux, I definitely recommend it. It's really easy to install. Um, they have all the instructions on there for how to how to get it on a USB drive, how to boot up in the USB drive, how to test it out, how to install it side by side with your current um uh, operating system or uh, in a virtual box. Um, so uh, I check the website out, uh, read about it, find out about it. But that's my, if you're going to try your toe in Linux, uh, Linux Mint is the way to go. Excellent. Very good. And uh, and when you talk about virtualization earlier, if, if you can probably get like uh, Parallels, uh, what's, what's the other one? Uh, VMware, mm -hmm. uh, if you're on a Mac. Uh, right. And you want to run these in virtual on a Mac. The, those would be two good ones. I wonder if the uh, there's one, the free one, Windows in a Box. I wonder if that would work. I think it's called Windows in a Box. Yeah, there's a free one. But um, but the Parallels and VMware would, pro would probably be the way to go uh, to, to to do this. And I think those are running on Big Sur, but I'm, yes. I'm not certain. Okay, good, good. They are because I have Parallels. Oh, so okay. it is running very well. Yeah. Uh, I have I have my beloved Raspberry Pi that uh, I use for playing on Linux, so that's uh, that's my preferred. Joanne, what's what's your pick of the week this week? My pick of the week is the geeky present that my husband got for Christmas, which was a new iPad Air. And nice. I will say, for not being able to go 
<laughs> excuse me, in September and play with it uh, at the Apple Store, I was quite surprised at how versatile it is and how light it is. And I'm really, I'm really digging the Touch ID on the button because yeah. there's no more, there's no more home button. But on the on-off switch, you just put your finger there and it acts. Because nice. I don't think you need on an iPad Face ID. Sometimes my Face ID frustrates me on the iPad more than it's useful. I on agree. the phone, <laughs> yes. On the iPad, not so much. But he opted for the boring silver, even though I tried to talk him into sky blue. <laughs> and he really, you know, he was coveting my 12.9 inch for a while. And I kept saying... Do you really need that much power? Because, you know, because, it, because of how expensive it is and what it does. He really is the type of guy that does email, does YouTube, does reading his newspaper. He's not, but this thing is so snappy. I mean, it's got a lot of power. If you want power, it's got power. I think there was, uh, it's come out, that's pretty clear. This is... Right now, if you're looking for a powerful iPad, don't buy an iPad Pro unless you need a 12.9 inch screen. Correct. This, don't, no one should be buying the 11 something iPad Pro. They should buy an iPad Air 2 for less, uh, which tells me that there's a new iPad Pro coming out soon. <laughs> so, it, so, oh, hold gee. on to that. <laughs> More to covet. Um, <laughs> no, but I, I think for 10.9 inches, um, my suggestion would be it comes with a 20 watt power adapter get something else because it's still not fast enough um but for a for for what it does and for what most people want to do if you want something bigger than that 10.2 screen this, it, this really nice machine for the price yeah I agree. it really is and we were very happy apple actually curried it curried it to us because he wanted it right away uh, wasn't going to wait for Christmas morning. <laughs> Within two hours of ordering it, it oh, was wow. at our door with a courier. That's that's what happened when I bought my MacBook last summer. Is uh, MacBook Pro um, because I was going uh, you know going away and I needed something right away because my old laptop had died and I ordered it and it was driven down from the store to to the house. So yeah, that was that was great. Mm -hmm. It's got the it's got the MagSafe. It's it's got the um, pencil so you can use pencil too and you can use the magic keyboard so you can use magic keyboard on it as well so it's almost like it's an pro. ipad pro yeah it it's, a, it's a pro um which makes me wonder what's going to be pro soon but again mm. more to cover later <laughs> one <laughs> of the things with face id by the way on an ipad is i have my ipad set up on a stand next to me here with a lap with a, a keyboard and whenever a notification comes up it pops up and wants to unlock but because it's not i'm not facing it 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 gives the error, like arrow unable to recognize you. And after a while, it locks up and I have to type in my password. And it's really, really annoying. <laughs> it's, I, I do wish I had the touch ID instead. You know what I think the problem really is? We look at our phones in portrait mode and we mm. use our iPads in landscape. In landscape. And where yeah. is the camera? Under your on thumb. On the sides. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, the, the other thing is I would love to have a touch ID on the power button on my phone. Because yeah. when you're right now, when you're wearing a mask, I'm constantly having to type in my password and I'm so tempted to put a bad password on my phone because it's because I, mm -hmm. I, I mistype it. You know, I made a, a hard password on purpose because I wasn't going to need it very often. Little did I know. 2020. <laughs> All, right. All right. That's good. Joanne. Thank you for for that one. That's a good pick. Uh, my pick is another Miros product so i was saying that miras is a new one new uh guy in the block with these smart home products this is a the miras smart plug mini and i've used a, uh, a bunch of different uh smart plugs in the past including a, a couple of wemos which i've recommended but one of the things i like about miras is it does you don't have to set it up in the app like wemo has belkin wemo has an app phillips has an app and but this you just set up in the uh home kit the the home app uh on your um uh, on, if you have a Mac or an iPhone, or you could set it up in the various uh, apps, like whether it's a, uh, a Echo or in, you know the Google or what have you. So this one you just set up in the um, uh, in the Home app, and again it's inexpensive. It's a two pack for twenty six dollars. I got two of them. Uh, I what I needed was this is funny. 
my son has a, a fan that he w- likes to, uh, it, he needs to have it on when he's going to sleep, but it sits on the wall against the, uh, on a shelf against the living room wall, the living room walls on the other side of his bedroom wall. And it hums, it buzzes the whole mm. wall. And so you sit in there at night and, and like, buddy, do you need the, the fan on all night? No, just until I fall asleep. So I put it on there. I put an automation on it. It turns on when he goes to bed. and then. A couple hours later, it turns off. <laughs> so that's the like that way. And and also, uh, I've I've got all the kids' lights on these on the uh, the smart home, so that for instance, when they're in their room and it's dinner time and they haven't come out because I've called them, I start flashing the lights on and off in their room to be really <laughs> annoying. Yeah, that's a total dad thing. Uh, that's a dad thing. That is a dad thing. <laughs> I'll just keep flashing this until you come out. I'll turn it on and off, on and off until you come out. Uh, but uh, yeah, the Smart Plug Mini, are, uh, if you're looking for Smart Plugs, they're they are nice. I'm looking forward to seeing what else Miros comes up with because so far I've been impressed by their products. And uh, they're not a fly-by-night overseas. I don't want to, you know, be, you know, uh, impinge upon any particular country's reputation. But they're not an overnight uh, I mean, a uh, fly by night overseas sort of little operation. They seem to be pretty good. People, they're, they're, uh, people have checked out their security on it and that sort of thing. It's not uh, installed with bad passwords, et cetera. It's because to have HomeKit on it, you have to have a certain security uh, on it. So, uh, so that's pretty good. All right. So I think that should do it for us this time. Uh, what do you think of anything we've talked about? We'd love to hear from you. Like I said, we'd love to, to get your feedback and we get some of our best ideas for discussions from listeners who want to hear what we have to say about it. And we've got some interesting things coming up. We'll be soon be talking about how do we plan to uh, save our content for the future? Like some of what we talked about today, but Joanne, with your DVDs and, and that sort of stuff, ripping them. So, you know, should we be buying movies and TV shows on these various streaming services? Uh, you know, because we're only licensing it. We're not actually buying it and that sort of thing. So we'll be talking about how we plan to keep our content for the future. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, So you can let us know your ideas or your comments by going to the show at sqpn.com slash technology or the SQPN Facebook page, facebook.com slash StarQuest Media, or send an email to technology at sqpn.com. And I'll put links from our discussion, all those headlines and our picks of the week and links to our Christmas presents that we got on our show notes at sqpn.com. Be sure you've subscribed to the show in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, your favorite podcast app, or on YouTube at the SQPN YouTube channel, where you should make sure to hit the bell to get notifications. Until next time, Joanne Merce here. Thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of technology. Thanks, Dom. Thomas Ho, thank you as well. It was a pleasure being here. And once again, I'm Dom Bettinelli. Thank you for listening to The Secrets of Technology on StarQuest. <laughs>